you welcome a guy that's really, uh, honestly, when I was down in the Bahamas, uh, nobody I enjoyed watching more than our next guest. Uh, Rick Pitino refers to him as Russ Diculous, and uh, glad to have Russ Smith, Louisville's junior guard, scorer extraordinaire. He just broke into our uh, player of the year top 10 list and averaging 20.3 points a game and also among the national leaders in steals. Russ, how you doing? Hello, I'm, I'm doing well. Yeah, you, you've come a long way from your days uh, at Archbishop Malloy uh, for Jack Curran, who I, uh, I know pretty well from my recruiting days as a <laughs> mid-major recruit, correct? Right, yeah, it's, it's long. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Well, first of all, talk talk about what what's a bigger honor? What you're doing right now in terms of you know putting up these numbers and, and winning games for Louisville, or having a horse named after you by Coach Patino? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's probably the horse because uh, as far as numbers go, <laughs> as far as numbers go, um, I can you know in the playgrounds and just being in high school. I mean, I don't I don't been through that um that that phase, but uh, having a horse named after you and being from Brooklyn, New York is is probably something nobody else can ever say. Russ, this is Coach Pearl. Uh, Coach Patino has said some really unique things about you, hasn't he? I, I mean, yeah. he talks about you differently than he really, I think, I've ever heard him talk about any player. Anybody, ever. Anybody. Okay, so what are some of the things that, let me ask you, what are, give me a couple things about you personally and your game that drive Coach Patino crazy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I do. I know I do a lot of crazy things, and I, I think he knows that. I know that what I'm doing is crazy, but I, I, I think it's my. I, I don't know. Maybe it's my approach to it. I mean, I, I'll always like try and just tell him, "All right, coach. I, I know. I, I know. I messed up my phone. Um, I'll, I'll get it back." But it's it's mostly just staying optimistic and just staying positive and just moving on to the next play. You know, if you just stay stuck and your mistakes so in the dark then you're just never going to move forward but uh with coach he's more so just make get a stop on defense and the offense to take care of itself and dating back to my freshman year i took horrible shots i was out of control i was always out of position on defense and then i started learning and getting better and my uh, offense started catching up with my defense and things just started uh clicking uh, how would you describe your relationship with with Patino? And has there been ever anything he said that you've really gotten upset about? Because you seem to take it well. Yeah, I mean, our relationship is great. I, I I love I love Coach. You know, I treat him as a person. You know, Coach has this you know big, you know, he's the Hall of Fame coach. It's Rick Patino, but. You know, I treat him like a person, and I, I just I treat him as a as a as a family member. You know, we laugh and stuff. I we make jokes, and I, it's pretty cool because I don't think nobody else does that. And I mean, I just really take pride in that. And for him to say things like <laughs> to me or whatever, I just listen to the message. And as far as the uh, the, the way it's said, the, the yelling or the language, sometimes I just I'm I'm pretty good at blocking it out, so I'm able to just take the message and turn um turn up that you know that loud tone into a good like a great wine some coaches mellow with age and i think that's what coach patino's done you couldn't handle him 25 years ago i'm telling you he'd have he'd have he'd have, he'd have torn you apart but he but he, he still loved you Wait, he would have kicked hard. him he would have kicked him off the team he like 10 have. times by now right he russ might have. He, he might have. Well, i've heard everyone's told me but i mean i've I've dealt with uh, Coach Karen and some of the guys that came back said, wow, Coach is like, Coach is soft now. And I'm like, oh, wow, really? Like, and then some of the guys that'll come back, like um, Julian Muhammad, will say the same thing. He'll say, oh, wow, Coach has changed. Or he's this now. And I'll be like, wow, I guess I caught him at the right time. Man. So yeah. I'm always going through that. Coach loves, he loves his teams. You know, he loves his teams. He loves his players. And he loves this group uh, over the last couple of years and what you guys have been able to do uh, at Louisville. Now, he's, I've gone up against him, and, and he, he's probably been the toughest matchup I've ever had in coaching Russ because he was so good 
defensively, taking away everything that I like to do. Um, right. And, and that's going to be, you guys are obviously doing a terrific job defensively, and you know that's where your bread is buttered. Okay, but you do not shoot the ball very well from three as a team, and you didn't last year either. Do you worry that that's going to be a factor, and what are you doing to try to improve your three-point shooting as a team? See, we know we know that our defense it will always keep us in the game if we're, if we're performing it right. Once the guys come to play defensively, it'll take care of itself. But offensively, if you if you get caught up in shooting and worrying about percentages, then I just feel like you're just going to shoot worse. I mean, my mentality is if you if you if you're going zero for five, then you might go two for seven if you don't shoot the next two. So with us, we just keep our heads up and we just keep shooting. And as long as we make the right passes and make the right basketball decisions on the court, then shots are going to go in. And at this level, we're all good. You got Luke Hancock, Wayne, Seaver, myself, Kevin. And we all feel like we're pretty good shooters. And as long as we keep shooting with confidence, things are going to drop. Russ, have you always had this mentality? I mean, it seems like you're able to get over the last play very well. Where a lot of college players, you can see it affects them. And they're, they're always worried about that last play or, or two plays ago if they made a mistake. You seem to, like you just said, hey, you miss a couple, you're going to keep shooting. You make a mistake, you're going to just come back down the other end and, and get after it on the defensive end. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm from a neighborhood where if you worry about your mistakes, you're just going to finish last. And, I, and, I've take, and I've taken pride in that. And I've been playing against older guys every time, ever since I was young. So if you make a mistake with the older guys, then, you know, you, you better get it back because you're on the court with a bunch of older guys and you don't want to look like the one that's, you know, not playing well. So I've always been kind of like mentally tough in that area. And, you know, watching sometimes if any one of my teammates get down or something, if we miss a few shots, I'm always the one that'll be there and say, hey, keep shooting. Like, I'm going to keep going to you. Like, this, this, there should be no reason why you're upset. You, you're, getting, you're getting the shots off, so. Yeah. Russ, you guys have got a huge game coming up at Memphis, uh, a renewal right. of a really old rivalry. Two questions. When you guys saw them down at the uh, Battle for Atlantis, where they, where they struggled a little bit, um, you understand they're a very, very talented team. They've got pros on that team. Uh, you're going to miss Gorgie Jang in this game, I think, a little bit more because of some of Memphis's athleticism and size. Has Coach Patino talked to you uh, this week about just how important this game is to Memphis and how um, right. how, how badly they need this one and in and, and preparation for uh, for the Tigers? Yeah, this is this is a big game mainly in part because Memphis uh, needs a needs a. We know how bad they need a win, especially against an opponent of our rank stature. So. The game is going to be sold out as well, so they're going to be pumped up. So it's kind of just all of a bad combination for us. Like, we're going to get some big home crowd. You know, Memphis really needs this win. They've just been knocked out of the top 25, I think. We're still number five. We have no Gorgie. So all the things, everything is up against us right now. And as a team, what we need to do is we just really need to lock in on our film, our scouting, and just execute what we have to do to uh, to come out with the victory um, over there at, at, in Memphis. You know, I, I know you don't like to look past anybody, talk about down the road, but uh, we know what December 29th is, Russ. I'm going to be in there right. for that one uh, at the Yum Center when you guys play that uh, that other team down the road. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you feel like, and I, I asked Peyton Siva this earlier in the year, but now that you've seen it, uh, do you feel like now you're clearly the favorite going into this game? You're at home. Uh, you guys are ranked high. You'll hopefully have, it sounds like you'll have uh, Gorky back for that game. And Kentucky's mm-hmm. certainly struggling right now. Yeah, but at, we. But at the end of the day, when teams struggle, it's, it, it's that's, that even makes it more tough because sometimes teams like that come out with more energy. I mean, you just never know, and you just can't never look past your opponent. And, you know, Coach Calipari is a great coach, coach up there. They have some great players up there. Uh, from their front court all the way to their guard play. So you just can't really sleep on anyone, and we have to approach every game like we're not the favorites. And that's kind of, I, I think we've been taking that approach pretty well, especially since Gorgie's been out, because it's like, man, we're really shorthanded now, so we got to really just um, just pound it, pound it on onto these other teams and um, come out with the win. What was, what was the picture the other day I saw, Russ, of, uh, of you eating a stack of waffles? Where was that? <laughs> yeah, I was at the waffle house just just um, munching. They had they had a stack of waffles out, so 
I mean, is it like all you can eat, all you can eat waffles night or something? <laughs> no, I just wanted to be playing just to have a picture out next to a bunch of waffles, but I don't, I, don't, I cannot eat that that many waffles. If anyone knows me well, they know I'm one waffle, one pancake, and I'm out. Well, Jeff, you, you Jeff, also don't want to go ahead. Yeah, you're, sh- you're 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 showing your geographical <laughs> bias here because Russ will tell you in Louisville, yes. if he's eating a waffle, there's only one place he's in, eating waffle a waffle house. in Louisville. That's, that's right. That's yeah, we don't have them. <laughs> yep. Russ knows that. I mean, yep. I'm from Boston. He's from New York. They don't have Waffle Houses in, in, in the Northeast, yep. right? Not, Not that all. many. Not so you got to get them when you're down there. Every time I'm down south, I go to Waffle House. Trust me. Uh, yeah, so, my dad loves it. <laughs> last, last question, Russ. you got to update us on how the horse is doing. Russ Diculus, what? Give me, give me the update. How many races? Where Where's he at right now? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken... I've I've uh, heard he he done, um ran in two races. One he finished second. He was actually winning the whole race, and he just stopped running. And one <laughs> horse went guess. by him. <laughs> yeah, I think right at the end and finished second. He was like clearly ahead of everyone. And then the next one he was uh, projected to go uh, between I think three and five, and he finished fourth. So uh, he's been doing. I guess he's, I guess I could say he's doing pretty well. And uh, coach and the trainer is happy with him. Listen, as long as he's making Patino some money, then then, then Rick, <laughs> Rick's happy with him. And as long, listen, as long as you guys are winning games, Rick will be happy with you. That's all that matters. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for coming on, Russ. We appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks down there in Louisville. No problem. Thank you. It's an honor to be on here. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. That's Louisville guard Russ Smith. Leading scorer for the uh, number five ranked Cardinals, averaging 20 